This is Ray from 8-Bit Digital TV, bringing you a tutorial on how to do the Predator Thermal Vision featured in our improv skit entitled, It's Predator Time. If you missed it, check out the first two parts, where we show you how to make the Predator look invisible or cloaked, and then the second part where we actually show you how to do the transition between being cloaked and not being cloaked. Since there were several clips that needed thermal vision, we put them all together as one sequence in Premiere Pro, leaving a little space on either side for editing purposes. After that, we imported that sequence into After Effects as a single clip. However you're doing it, drag the background footage onto the Create New Composition button. Right click on the new comp and go to Composition Settings. Type in Predator Vision for the name. Make sure that it's set up with the same dimensions and frame rate as the source and or destination media. You may have to unlock the aspect ratio and then set it to whatever size you want. 1280 by 545 is 235 or Cinemascope. And I'm going to set mine to 24 frames a second or 23976. Now click OK. If you didn't scale and position the footage in Premiere, you can go ahead and scale and position your footage here by using the preview pane. Or you can hit S or P to bring up the controls for scale and position. Or you can click the layer expansion arrow and set them both there from the transform section. Since the predator or victim have a separate effect applied to them than the background, you either need to use a green screen or mask out your actors frame by frame using either the roto brush or the pen tool. We hope to cover all three of these methods in future tutorials. But for now, just know that I'm playing Arnie, and since I'm in most of the shots and I'm moving around all over the place, we use the roto brush tool for me. Luke, who's playing the part of the Predator, wasn't in the shots very often, so we masked him out using the pen tool. Whichever method you use, the mask doesn't need to be super accurate, since you'll be feathering it. I went ahead and got Luke's footage all masked out and saved it as Stalker, and did mine all as a comp called Victim. I'm going to go ahead and drag those onto the Predator comp now. If you need to scale or position these, go ahead and do that now too. After watching the footage from the movies, it seemed as though the background was virtually solid black or blue, with a few shades in between. Right-click the layer and rename it to Background. Under the Effects and Presets tab, type in Hue. Hue is the degree angle of the base color on the color wheel, which is like your rainbow colors, the Roy G. Biv, which is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Drag and drop the Hue Saturation effect onto your background color. In the Effects and Controls panel, enable the colorize option. By default it's set to red, which makes it a pinkish tone, so go ahead and change the colorize hue to 220, which makes it blue. It's not quite blue enough, it's almost black and white, so bring up the colorize saturation from 25 to around 80. It's still too light, so go ahead and bring down the colorize lightness down to negative 45. And looking at the original footage, there's also little or no detail, so let's bring down the sharpness by adding some blur. Under the effects and presets tab, start typing in Gaussian, or Gaussian, Gaussian, <laughs> Drag and drop the Gaussian Blur effect from the search results down onto your background layer. We want to smooth things out just a bit, so just bump the blurriness up to around 3. This is getting pretty close, but we still need to knock almost everything down to black. While you may be thinking that increasing the contrast would give you what you want, you need more control of the point where it starts turning everything to black. Duplicate the background layer by clicking on it and pressing Ctrl or Command D. Rename the new layer to Threshold. Under the Effects Controls panel, remove the Hue Saturation effect by clicking on it and pressing Delete, but don't delete the Gaussian Blur. Under the Effects and Presets tab, start typing Threshold. Threshold forces everything to black and white based on whether it's above or below a certain color value. Drag and drop the Threshold effect from the search results over to the Effects Controls panel above the Gaussian Blur effect. By default, it's set to the middle, or 128, but don't change it yet. We left in the Gaussian Blur and placed it below the threshold to soften the edges of the blackened areas, otherwise it's really crisp. We don't really want it to be black and white, so change the layer style for the threshold layer to Multiply. We're going to talk more about layer blending modes later, but for now know that it combines the two layers together and darkens them, where white is neutral or transparent. If you need to tweak the threshold point, do it now, but I think it looks pretty good for mine so I'm not going to change it. Though I like the mix, this may be a little bit too dark, so press T to bring up the opacity, or transparency, and then scrub it down to around 80%. That looks good. Rather than basing the heat signature off of temperature, we're going to base it off of luminance, or the lightness or darkness of a layer. This means that the first thing we need to do is make the actor show up white hot. Luke's hand is where it needs to be, but I'm way too dark for once. In the Effects and Presets pane, type in Levels. Drop the Levels effect onto the Victim layer. Lower the input white, which kind of washes it out. I'm going to set mine to 150 and raise the gamma, which washes it out even more. I'm going to set mine to 2.4. Depending on how much your footage varies, you may want to keyframe the histogram. We want to simplify things and apply the effect to both actors at once, so we're going to pre-comp them together. Click on the Victim layer, hold down Control or Command if you're on a Mac, and click the Stalker layer so that both are selected. Pre-compose the layers together by pressing Control or Command, Shift, and C. Type Actors for the name. 
Move all attributes is forced because we selected multiple layers, but uncheck the open new composition if it is checked. Now click OK. So rather than going from black to white in normal colors, we need it to go through the thermal colors, which are black, blue, teal, dark green, light green, red, orange, and yellow. Under the Effects and Presets pane, type in Curves. We'll cover curves more in a future tutorial. Drop the Curves effect onto the Actors layer. Clicking on the line makes a control point that you can move, and dragging that control point off the grid deletes it. If you have Photoshop, I highly recommend setting up this curve in Photoshop and saving it out as a preset, because the Curves pane in After Effects is uber tiny, only shows one channel at a time, and has fewer grid lines which kind of help you determine where you need to put the points. If you don't have Photoshop, just skip this step and make the curves in After Effects. If you are using Photoshop, click on File from the menu bar, and then click New. Set the width and height to about 600 pixels, and click OK. From the menu bar up top, click Layer, New Fill Layer, Gradient, and then click OK. Click the drop down for Gradient, and double click the black and white gradient, which is usually the third option. Set the angle to zero so that it goes from left to right. Click OK. We want to see the original gradient too, so select the Rectangle Marquee tool from the toolbar. Click and drag to select the top half of the gradient. Click the Curves icon from the Adjustment pane to add an adjustment layer. We've got that all set up so non-photoshoppers can join back in now. Set the channel to red. Create the following shape. We're not going to stop here very long, so you may want to pause the video while you get this figured out. Set the channel to green, and make this shape. Set it to blue, and make this shape. Finally, set it to RGB, and make this shape. If you created it in Photoshop, click the Practically Invisible Adjustment Panel menu button. Click Save Curves Preset. Back in After Effects, click the Curves folder icon to load it. If you just use After Effects, when you get it looking good, click the Save icon for the curves to save out a preset. The lines between are a little too crisp, so under the Effects and Presets tab, start typing Gaussian. Drag and drop the Gaussian Blur effect from the search results to the area above the Curves effect on the Effects and Presets tab. Scrub the value up to taste. I'm going to set mine somewhere around 5. That's pretty much it, so let's take a look at the final result. If you found this tutorial helpful, help us out by rating it and leaving comments. If this tutorial helped you with one of your videos, make it a video response or at least send us a link because we'd love to see it. Don't forget to check out our improv skit entitled It's Predator Time, check out our tutorials on predator cloaking, and subscribe to 8-Bit Digital TV for news, tutorial skits, and more.